So I've tried to avoid spoilers because I want people to revisit these older films with their own impressions and their own eyes. But with this one, I can't avoid it. So there are going to have to be some spoilers for parts four and five. If you want no spoilers, then I would suggest watching those films before listening onward. But with that warning out of the way, why are we talking about Friday the 13th and especially parts four and five with the Halloween trilogy that we're going to see completed soon enough? One, there's a kind of genetic connection, which is very clever. For one thing, the new character, Corey Cunningham, is obviously an homage to Sean Cunningham. For those who don't know, Sean did the first Friday the 13th film. He produced it and he directed it. He's actually been a major influence on the Friday the 13th franchise. And he's even had a huge legal battle over the rights to Jason and whether he can control Friday the 13th. We're not going to get into that. So Sean is pretty influential within Friday the 13th as a mythology. There's also the added factor, of course, that both Jason and Michael are very similar. They're very, very different, but you can obviously see a parallel in terms of they stalk their enemies. They are ruthless. They're very powerful. They seem to be human, at least early on. They may be supernatural, but we don't know for sure. And now we're going to get into the parallel between Halloween Ends and parts four and five, but also some key differences, which I think will, which will not make the Blumhouse trilogy look good in retrospect, but we'll wait and see. So what is going on with parts four and five? Well, if you know the main series with Friday the 13th, essentially what we have is Jason and a lot of the entries, not all the entries, but for a lot of the entries, he's terrorizing people in Crystal Lake. So at the end of part three, he seen really, really badly injured. And he comes back in part four. Of course, he's a little angry. He wants revenge. He does what he usually does. He terrorizes a new set of people, usually teenagers. But in this one, in part four, at the very end of it, this kid, Tommy, fights back and apparently kills Jason. And it's a very shocking sequence. And given what we know about horror franchises, we think, okay, that was interesting. That's a nice ending. We know he's not dead. He's going to come back. And sure enough, we have a new sequel. It's called A New Beginning. It's Friday the 13th, Part 5. So we think, ah, uh, Jason is back. They're going to do the same old thing. And for the most part, you would be correct. Tommy's a little older. He's traumatized. He's trying to work through what happened. And it seems Jason is back. He's back to killing. We have a new set of teenagers, and we're going through the same old thing. I will say, at least when you're watching the film, it feels like, okay, this is well done. But we've done this all before, so who cares? It's just getting old at this point. But then there's a major twist because it turns out it's not Jason. It was a fake version of Jason. So those were real killings. People did die, but it's not really Jason. It was a fake Jason killing all these people all along. We think during the film that maybe Tommy is Jason, that Tommy went crazy. And even though there is one major twist, there's a second major twist, but I'm not going to get into that. I think it was really clever, and if you're really curious, you can see the film for yourself. But there are actually several twists. Of course, if you're a diehard Jason fan, you're going to be disappointed because you want to see Jason doing these things, not someone else impersonating Jason. But when I look back upon it, and again, I only saw some of the key scenes again. I didn't see it all the way through. I think it holds up pretty well overall because, again, they played it straight. In other words, we have a simple question and answer with... Friday the 13th. Did Jason die in part four? Yes. He's still human. As a human, he did die in part four. So is he in part five? No. You can legitimately say he's not in part five. He has been killed. So Tommy did kill him. This is a fake Jason. We're done. So is it plausible that someone could impersonate Jason? Yes. Somebody with his build somebody of his size, because again, remember, yes, it's extraordinary, it's weird, but somebody could impersonate Jason. So one reason this holds up is it is plausible. There is some silliness, of course, because when they do the twist, it turns out the fake Jason has two masks. So he has the hockey mask, and he has another mask underneath the hockey mask, which is pretty silly, but it is roughly plausible this would happen. So that's one reason it really works. The second reason, and I think this is where Halloween, the trilogy, has been struggling, is the characters have a lot of distinctiveness. In other words, Tommy, Reggie, and a few others do have distinct personalities. Of course, you can fault the acting. It's very melodramatic, and the style of acting probably doesn't fit today. And there are other flaws with the production. But 
the characters do hold up. They're very distinct. They feel plausible to me. They feel real. Whereas with this Halloween trilogy, really the only two characters that have felt real to me are Karen and Tommy Doyle. Granted, I would like the characters to be better. I don't like what the characters did necessarily, but as characters, I can believe them and what they're doing. But most of these characters, whether Laurie, Michael, Hawkins, Allison, and now Corey, they don't feel very real to me. They just feel like plot points moving the story along. But I don't really care what's going on in their minds. They don't feel like real people. They just feel like very constructed characters. So those two reasons really make part five hold up. One is its plausibility. Again, of course, it's a movie. You have to suspend a little disbelief, but somebody could, in fact, impersonate Jason. It's not too extraordinary. You really can't do that with Michael because they've made Michael so tall, he's so powerful, and he's so old. So now we have to imagine really old men with insane amounts of superpower. Coincidentally, they're this tall and they're just in this similar place. If there is a copycat in Halloween Ends, we got to make some extraordinary assumptions. Again, maybe it'll work, but I have my doubts. The second reason is they don't seem to have really strong characters. So the characters we're following just feel way too phony. But at least in the early sequels, even with Friday the 13th, the characters do feel plausible and they do feel real. Now granted, not all of them work. There are a few characters I totally forgot, but I remember the situation. Like there's this one sequence with this kind of goth music girl where the way fake Jason kills her is very funny and it really stands out. And I kind of remember the sequence. And sure enough, it basically played out how I remembered it in my memory. Even when the characters are very generic, they're put in a situation that makes them stand out. Whereas this Halloween trilogy has kind of just gone through the motions. They don't feel like real characters, so the depth of their killing is pretty weak. As you can tell, I'm kind of skeptical of what they're doing with the Halloween trilogy. But again, with Freddy, you can't really replicate what they did with Nightmare on Elm Street because, again, it's a very different character, very different set of powers. But with Jason and Michael, we have very similar characters overall, even in terms of their powers and even in terms of their abilities and even in terms of their attitudes. And also, you have the plot. So you have the template for what they did with A New Beginning. To me, this should actually be fairly simple, what you're going to do with Halloween Ends. So it should be actually very hard to screw it up, but maybe they're still going to screw it up. The idea of a copycat or fake out onto itself is not bad, but it can be done badly. With A New Beginning, it was done fairly straightforward. It was done fairly simply, and that works for that series. Now, again, Halloween is its own series. It has its own rules, its own expectations. That's true, but I think if you're going to pull the copycat trigger, you want to be careful. Yes, don't totally copy, no pun intended, what they did with Friday the 13th. It seemed what was really good about that twist was it was simple, it was clear cut. We have real Jason, we have fake Jason. There's no attempt to mix up the two, really. During the movie, they try to mix you up, but when you see the stories as a whole, you realize okay, one was with fake Jason, one was with real Jason. It's a clear cut distinction. Here, it seems they're really trying to blend both flavors. I don't know if it's going to work out. Secondly, I connect it to the characters. Here, I don't know with Halloween Ends if I'm going to connect to anyone, frankly. I think that's going to be a big burden. But we'll have to wait and see if they pull it off. I have my doubts, but they do have a template. They do have precedent, so hopefully they'll figure it out.